Miller and Daryl Kyle the pitcher. For the Braves, a lineup Bobby Cox has stuck with pretty exclusively the last few days. Klesko, Grissom, and Dye in the outfield. Terry Pendleton, Chipper Jones, Mark Lemke, and Fred McGriff from third to first. Javi Lopez gets back behind the plate to catch John Smoltz, who is on the mound for his 33rd start. He has six complete games and two shutouts. 21 and 8 on the year, as you know, leading the National League in strikeouts. 11 and 9 lifetime against the Astros. He's made three starts against Houston this year, and he's 2 and 1 against them. He's allowed 20 hits in 20 innings, but has walked only three and struck out 21 against the Astros this year and at home he's pitched quite well 11 and 3 beat and as you know he has said over the last few games that he likes to he's trying to treat these last few starts like playoff starts. Well here's a guy that's given him a lot of trouble in his career John Cangelosi who's 8 for 15 lifetime against Smoltz taking high and away ball one Cangelosi hitting 272 on the year he'll be followed by Craig Biggio and then Jeff Bagwell. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Little looping fly ball, shallow left center field. Chipper Jones runs it down. And a good start for Smoltz. He gets Cangelosi for out number one. Like the Braves were last week, the Houston Astro glad to be out of Colorado in Coors Field. They lost three straight to the Rockies there before coming here. But the Cardinals were losing a couple in a row themselves, so Houston remains two and a half behind St. Louis. But virtually out of the wild card race, as we mentioned, they are now seven games back in the wild card race. Yeah, that's that's a real long shot. They had the lead when they went into St. Louis for three games earlier in the month, and they lost all three games, and that has put them in a situation where they've had to play catch up ever since. Craig Biggio in a severe slump this final month of the season. His average up over 300 much of the year. Now it's down to 291. Six hits in his last 52 at bats. The 0 1 from Smoltz taken low one ball one strike you saw Smoltz's strikeout total 255 he could set a Atlanta record tonight 262 is the Atlanta Braves record for strikeouts in the season Phil Necro back in 1977 he needs seven to tie it eight to break it straight away center Marquise Grissom waiting and quickly two are down here in the top half of the first inning there figure to be a lot of U-turns tonight. John Smoltz leading the league in strikeouts. Daryl Kyle fifth in the league in strikeouts. John's numbers this year, though, so much improved over the past. And not only in wins, but you can see right there, strikeouts to walks. Much better. Now Jeff Bagwell having another banner season. 317, 30 home runs, 115 RBIs. Two outs, base is empty. Smoltz delivers a strike in the outside corner. So much of the Astros' offense revolves around Biggio, Bagwell, Barry, and Bell. They dropped Derek Bell. Terry Collins dropped Bell in the order a little bit to try to get a little more production. But one of the things that's been hurting them offensively, Pete, Biggio and Bagwell especially, want to win probably more than anybody. I mean, they have a desperate desire to get the Astros into the playoffs. And they've been trying maybe a little too hard, swinging at bad pitches. You mentioned Biggio's numbers of late put him in a slump as a result. Here's the 0-2 on the way to Bagwell in the dirt one ball, two strikes. The Astros have had good luck in this ballpark the last few years. They've won nine of their last 13 games played here in Atlanta. So this is not a place that they're intimidated by at all when they come here. Here's the one two on the way and there's a drive down the left field line It's going to be in for at least one now it gets to the wall Bagwell's going to have himself a double and that will add to his league leading total that is his 47th double of the year. They have a good ball club they have a good lineup they have some pitching that is a bit sporadic at times but can be outstanding also at times but right now the thing that's hurting them two areas one the hitting that has gone into a deep freeze of late that's put some pressure on their pitching and also their defense they are next to the bottom in the National League in defense just ahead actually tied with Colorado just ahead of the Mets here's Sean Barry he's been swinging a hot bat hitting 281 now for the year 15 homers 91 RBIs both career highs for him he fouls off the first pitch 0 and 1. 
He is one of the few guys in this lineup that's been hot this month. The Astros, like the Braves, same record for the month of September. Each team has won only four and lost ten. Good breaking ball, 0 and 2. And while the Astros are playing here in Atlanta, St. Louis at home to take on the Cubs, and that's always a very competitive series. Two men out, Bagwell down at second, a count of nothing and two on Sean Barry. The 0 2 on the way. Taken outside, low ball one, one ball, two strikes. John's last start against the Rockies, Pete, was ugly. If you just look at the line and say, well, boy, he really got boxed around and gave up eight earned runs in six innings. But he knew he was going to give up a bunch of runs in Coors Field. That's inevitable. I always I like the fact anyway in that start how he stuck with it hung in there for six innings trying to battle through it and hope his teammates could pick him up a little bit. Now the one two and there's a drive left center field that's going to drop in for a base hit to get a run in Bagwell around third he'll score with no play. And after two men were out and the base is empty in the top half of the first inning back to back two out hits and the Astros have a one nothing lead RBI number 92 for Sean Barry. That was one of the reasons for the flip flop. Yes Derek Bell's having a terrific year with 109 RBI's but there were a lot of times where just this type situation where Bagwell would get on with two outs and they couldn't get him home. Barry has been a lot more productive of late and that's why he's batting cleanup right now instead of Derek Bell. Bell 271 with 109 RBI's 17 home runs. Chase back is Barry. There's a strike outside corner. Nothing and one. The count now on Derek Bell. Numbers down since the All Star break. Has not had the big second half. The 0 1 delivery outside corner. And Smoltz ahead in the count 0 2 on Bell. Derek Bell plays hard. He hustles down the line, goes hard after everything in the outfield. But sometimes the manager's got to make some changes in the lineup when one guy gets hot. Just shuffle him around just a little bit. Again to first, again, Barry back. One run in, two men out. And the 0 2 on the way is upstairs, one ball, two strikes. While the Braves are playing these two games with Houston, the Montreal Expos will be at home taking on the New York Mets. And we'll keep an eye on that game for you. Tonight is Jeff Facero against Jason Isringhausen. And they are underway, no score after one. First strike out of the night for John Smoltz, out number three here in the top half of the first inning. But the Astros on the board, an RBI single by Sean Barry gives Houston a one nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the first. Half of the first inning, here's their starting lineup. Bobby Cox has Grissom, Pendleton, and Chipper Jones at the top of the order. Fred McGriff, the cleanup hitter, followed by Klesko and Lopez tonight. Then Die, Lemke, and Smoltz to round out the bottom third of the order. For the Astros in the outfield, Derek May in left, John Cangelosi in center, Derek Bell in right, Barry, Miller, Biggio, and Bagwell from third to first. Behind the plate, Tony Eusebio, and on the mound, Daryl Kyle, 27 years old, 6'5", 185, out of Garden Grove, California. And his first pitch on the way to Marquise Grissom, high and away ball one. He's 12 and 8 this year, a 4-19 ERA. Two of those wins have come against Atlanta. He's 4 and 5 lifetime against the Braves. That'll be back out of play. One ball, one strike on Grissom. Of late, he's been awful tough. His last two starts, he's won 
those, he's won those two starts without a walk, including a complete game effort against the Phillies. That's the key to his success. Only two starts all year yep. that he's not walked a batter, and they've come back to back. The 1 1 on the way. Ahead in the count on Grissom. One ball, two strikes. Grissom, Pendleton, Jones do up here in the bottom of the first. Astros picked up a run in the top half. Out of play. Still a ball and two strikes on Marquise Grissom. Grissom with 190 hits for the year. That's a career high, but his goal much higher than that. He wants 200. Good breaking ball strikes out Grissom one down and that's Darrell Kyle's bread and butter pitch that curveball. He, he can be so dominating at times you, you look at his strikeout totals he told you he's fifth in the league and here's that hook again. But then again he can walk a bunch of guys at times 87 walks and 200 innings coming in 14 hit batsmen 12 wild pitches. It just from night to night you're not sure which Daryl Kyle you're going to get. He had the start in that Labor Day game against the Cardinals was given a seven to two lead and couldn't hold it. Here's Terry Pendleton takes a curveball inside ball one Pendleton batting 245. That turned out to be a crucial game in that three game series. As the Cardinals picked up three games in the standings. Went up a game and a half and have not looked back. Two and nothing, the count on Terry Pendleton. It goes to three and nuts. The one thing working against Houston right now is that they don't get a chance to play those teams. Right. Or that team, that Cardinal team that's right above them in the Central Division. They're playing a team from a different division. So they have to get some help. Ball four. And there's the first walk of the night for Kyle as he walks Pendleton with one out. Unlike the other divisions where San Diego and the Dodgers meet seven more times. They're battling it out. Cleveland can clinch tonight the Central Division. They're playing the White Sox team right behind them. Seattle and Texas playing right now. The Yankees and Baltimore playing right now. Think how important that could have been though to Houston if they had been able to maintain the yep. lead playing the Cardinals. They could have been on the road right now playing teams outside the division and the pressure would be on St. Louis playing within the division. Well here's Chipper Jones. He's got himself another hitting streak going nine straight games hitting 313 now for the year. Pendleton the runner at first one out. And that's back out of play the count on one. Chipper only one for ten in his career against Kyle. They go one on the way and it's low one ball one strike. When he keeps his fastball down he's got enough on it to make it a long night for the hitters. And also that curveball he threw Grissom if he's around the plate with it. Can be a mighty quick 0 for 4. Here's the 1 1 good breaking ball. That's a sharp breaker. Mm -hmm. Caught the corner, one ball, two strikes. And it's slow enough, Pete, see that it acts almost like a changeup, too, because he throws hard. You've got to be geared up for the fastball if you're behind in the count. Bagwell holding Pendleton. There's a throw over. Terry gets back. For a base hit, Terry Pendleton will take the turn at second. Hold on there as the throw comes back to the middle of the infield. So Chipper Jones now with a 10 game hitting streak as he loops a single into right field. Braves have runners at first and second with one man out for Fred McGriff. Went back to back with the breaking ball, and Chipper stayed back on it pretty well, kept his hands back, extended his hitting streak. 
McGriff at 296. He's got a seven game hitting streak. Fourth 100 RBI career year of his career. One ball, no strikes. Tap right back to the pitcher. Kyle goes to second out there. Miller on to first. Not in time there. Moving over to third is Terry Pendleton. So runners are now at first and third with two outs for Ryan Glesko. And were it not for Chipper Jones bearing down on Miller, who had to kind of reach back into the path of Chipper Jones. Might have been able to turn that double play. Kyle didn't give him a very good feed. Let's go 282 for the year, 33 homers. First and third, two outs. One nothing Houston, bottom of the first. Good block by Eusebio. Keeps the runners where they are. One ball, no strikes. The Astros tried to shore up their ball club when they lost Billy Wagner to an injury their closer they went out and got Greg Olson the former Brave who had been with the Detroit Tigers to help out in the bullpen they also picked up Kurt Manwaring from the Giants to help out behind the plate one oh just off the inside corner ball two two and nothing now in Glasgow. And also that big deal getting Danny Darwin, although Darwin has not really done a lot, at least to this point, to help the Astros. It was a big acquisition at the time. Two men out, McGriff at first, Pendle in third. And a 2 0 pitch on the way to Cresco right through there for a call strike two and one. And it also appears that all of the uncertainty about the future of the Astros in Houston is. No longer a big problem. Voters expected to approve a new stadium for the Houston area in November, which will be ready by the year 2000 and will keep the Astros in Houston. Three and one now, and Ryan Plesko. Now, new stadiums, all well and good, Pete, but it sure would be nice if you had some people come out support you too. The Astros are in a in a pennant race but I wouldn't say they're turning out in droves. They are averaging about twenty four thousand per date at home. But for some reason they're not really pouring out to help this ball club. Three and one the count now on Ryan Plesko McGriff the runner at first Terry Pendleton over at third brains trying to get that run back here in the bottom of the first. And the fake throw to third look back to first nothing happening. Still three and one on Ryan Plesko. Three one on the way, and he walked him, and that loads the bases. Second walk of the inning, issued by Kyle. Bases loaded now with two outs for Javi Lopez, and Eusebio out to the mound. Back to that stadium situation for a moment, uh, Joe. The, the two franchises that were really being talked about with question marks going into the season were the Houston Astros and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Would they stay? Would they go? Well, it appears now Houston is set to stay if they get that approval from the voters, which they expect to get. But I'm not so sure what's going to happen now with Pittsburgh. Jim Leland earlier today announcing that he will not return as manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates next year. He said it's just time for us to part ways and. I'm sure he'll land somewhere else as a as a big league manager but you really got to scratch your head and wonder how much longer the Pirates can survive up there. Yeah it's disappointing news for Pirates fans but I don't know that it's all that shocking. To me. It's not that shocking to me. Oh and one on Lopez. Once that announcement was made in August which contradicted everything the Pirates organization have been talking about for the last year about in increasing their payroll. But once they made that announcement, we're going to cut payroll and started that fire sale of all their highest salaried players. 
little bit of a betrayal to Jim Leland of what he had been told the previous year. And he will move on. There's a little chopper up the middle. It's going to be fielded. Dropped by Biggio. Picks it up. Got him. He recovered just before the runner, Ryan Klesko, arrived. And that bails Kyle out. The Braves leave him loaded in the first inning at the end of one. One nothing Houston. Craig Biggio was definitely living right on this one after Javi Lopez checked swung bounced it out toward him squeezed his glove too soon and then it hits right in the middle of the bag and comes up to him in time to get Klesko if it hits on the edge of the bag one run for sure scores and maybe two because it would have rolled away from Biggio and Miller but it's still one nothing Houston and it'll be Derek May leading off here in the top half of inning two 255 with five homers and 33 RBIs will be followed by Tony Eusebio. And then Orlando Miller. Smoltz delivers, grounded foul on the right side. Well, if you were watching the game last night, you may have heard us discussing a, a possibility for later in the week about two injured Braves players, Jeff Blauser and David Justice. And now Bobby Cox was hoping the two could maybe get down to the instructional league and play a couple of games. Still may happen for Jeff, but disappointing news today on David Justice for David Justice fans and for the Braves fly ball by Derek May out to left field Fesco under it and he's got it for the outs as you know David has been taking batting practice and hoping that he might be able to return ahead of schedule he was not expected to return until spring training next year but they wanted the doctors to take one more look and they took one more look and David Justice has been shut down for the rest of the year it's just too risky yeah and I know he's very disappointed because he felt like he was getting close felt like there might be some contributions he could make especially as the Braves got closer to the postseason. But I think taking the safer approach to make sure he's ready for next spring and not having to spend his entire winter rehabbing, doctors made the recommendation that he not play. They just felt that the muscle strength was too tentative in that shoulder and that if he re-injured the shoulder, then it would take much longer to get mm -hmm. David back than just next spring. So. They might have to go in and do a total reconstruction. Right. Here's the 1-1 one, one now to Eusebio. Sort of half waved at that pitch, but I guess he held up in the count two and one. Eusebio batting 259 with a homer and 18 runs driven in. That caught the corner. It's two and two. There's going to be one visitor all night right behind Randy Marsh, the home plate umpire. A lone pigeon. <laughs> Who's getting his fill on some new grass seed thrown out by Ed Mangan and his crew. Second strike out of the night for John Smoltz. He is now just five away from tying Phil Necro's Atlanta record. Two down here in the top of the second. Orlando Miller will be the batter. Good fastball. Threw it right by him. Yes, the ground crew was out doing a, a lot of bird chasing earlier in the yeah. day. There, there were more than one on the field earlier in the day, and the ground crew was running around clapping their hands real loud, trying to scatter the birds. That one's certainly not disturbed by any of the goings on. It's going to weigh 700 pounds by the time the game's <laughs> over. Miller takes one high and away, ball one. Astros leading at one nothing. We're in the top of the second, first of two with Houston. We have a day game here tomorrow with Greg Maddox against Mike Hampton. Then that five-game series with the Expos begins on Thursday night. One ball, one strike, and Orlando Miller. They're in the top of the third now in Montreal. Mets and Expos, nothing, nothing. One one. Good fastball one and two and Miller was late on his swing now the one two on the way to Orlando Miller and it's right back at us. Right off the sign. I wasn't waiting to see the ricochet. 
I was over here trying to cover up Phil so he didn't get hurt. I was trying to figure out which you'll, you'll <laughs> see me had 14 different. Well, you can't really see me there. I headed 14 different directions. I wasn't really sure which hand to catch the ball with. <laughs> One and two to count. Now the wind by Smoltz and the one two on the way. Another strikeout his third. Smoltz may get that record tonight. One two three go Houston in the second. We go to the bottom half. Still one nothing Astros. Go to the bottom half of the second inning. Houston on top one to nothing. This telecast is authorized on broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. It's 1-0 Houston. We're in the bottom half of the second. Braves left the bases loaded in the first inning. Now Jermaine Dye will try to get something started here in the second. He's hitting 293, 11 homers, 36 RBIs. to play right side the count 0 -1. I think Jermaine's going to finish in the top three or four in rookie of the year balloting it's, I think the rookie of the year award though is going to probably go to either Todd Hollinsworth or Jason Kendall Hollinsworth really finishing strong for the Dodgers what are his numbers he's up to about the same batting average that I has got about 10 more RBIs and got a lot more at bats he's had some huge hits for the Dodgers yeah he has and of course Jason Kendall's over 300 but not much power Deep to left field. This might get one more RBI for Jermaine Dye. Nope, on the track. Derek May runs it down, one down. He may not get the Rookie of the Year award, but I've said before and I'll say it again, I wouldn't trade him for anybody else. No, not for any of the names mm -hmm. that might finish above him. I like him in the Braves Uni. Mark Lemke hitting 246. He has four homers, 36 runs driven in. That is fouled away in the count of one. A run, two hits for the Astros. No runs, one hit for the Braves. We're in the bottom of the second. Kyle delivers the 0 1 pitch and misses high and outside. One ball, one strike. Curveball misses two and one. Well, Mark McGuire has 11 games left, I believe it is, Pete. Is that right, Phil? 11 games left for the A's. Think he can do it? Needs 11 home runs to tie Roger Maris. I don't know. That's going to be tough. Two and two to count. It has been done once before. Frank Howard hit 11 home runs over an 11 game stretch in May of 1968. That is it for Lemke. Second strike out of the game for Kyle. And John Smoltz will step in. Did he get him with the breaking ball like he did Marquise? Yes, he did. And a very effective pitch for him so far and helped him get out of that first inning trouble. Smoltz hitting 203. He's got nine RBIs this year. One ball, no strikes. No, I think Roger Maris's record is going to survive for one more year, but I don't think it would have had McGuire not missed those what, 32 games earlier right. in the year. Yeah. If he's healthy and plays the whole season, looks like he would have surpassed the 61 home run mark in a year where a lot of records are falling. I think he hit number 50 in game number 119, and that was the fewest number of games it took to hit 50 home runs in history. That's it for Smoltz. A one, two, three inning for Kyle. His third strikeout. We've played two here in Atlanta. Astros still lead it. One nothing.
forecast for rain tonight, but if it does, that one guy, well, two of them, they don't need their umbrellas. Let's check the Axit AR scoreboard. Game's underway. Pittsburgh leading Cincinnati 2-1. to one. New York, Montreal still scoreless at Montreal. Florida got three in the second against the Phillies. Over in the American League, Boston leading Detroit 2 to nothing. Still raining at New York. And none of the other games underway. Well, one other one underway. Minnesota, no score at Kansas City. Daryl Kyle leads off here in the third against John Smoltz. one nothing Houston, our score. All one to Kyle. Astros run coming in the first, a two-out double by Jeff Bagwell, a two-out run scoring single by Sean Barry. One ball, one strike. Two and one, the count on Kyle. the middle Chipper Jones fielded a funny hop on the first in time and that's five in a row set down now by Smoltz one out in the third and we go back to the top of the order and John Cangelosi who popped out to short his first time up Tom Glavin alluded to his start two two games ago Pete as being a playoff type atmosphere because the team had been struggling they'd lost six in a row he said it took on the same importance each pitch so important so that you didn't make a mistake and if nothing else that is getting the pitching staff ready for some tough games coming up with Montreal another little flare shallow center field Chipper Jones back for this one he can't get to it neither can Marquise Grissom and Cangelosi has reached again against John Smoltz he is now one for two tonight he is now nine for 17 in his career against Smoltz and he is wearing out the end of his bat too one pop up hit just about like that in the first inning if you just joined us that chipper caught and now one that's out of reach hit number three off Smoltz it'll bring up Craig Biggio fly to center his first time up just off the corner ball one sometimes when the desire to win and the competitive nature takes over it, it and each at bat seems so big you can just really eat yourself up that's what's been tearing up Vigio in this slump if your ball club is struggling and you're looked to as one of the leaders and one of the veteran guys on this team even though you may not have any postseason experience you take it upon yourself to do it all it's awfully difficult and you can see how he has struggled he is such a good player he very seldom goes through long slumps like he's in this month that'll be up into the seats out of play in the count one ball one strike that's because he can do so many things to to beat you offensively he can bunt he can hit and run he can't hit the ball out of the ballpark he's got 15 homers he's got a lot of weapons it's just that right now he's not able to put any of them to use he can also get in the way of a pitch. He's been hit 26 times this year. Hmm. Tops in the National League. There's a base hit right center field over quickly is Jermaine Dye to try to cut it off. He knocks the ball down. Biggio heading for second on his way to third Cangelosi. And it's a hustle double for Craig Biggio runners now second and third with one out. 23rd double of the year for Biggio. The field here is is somewhat saturated. Heavy rains in Atlanta the last couple of days. And I thought perhaps it was part of the reason why Jermaine didn't get to that ball, but he just flat didn't pick it up. And they're going to credit him, I believe, with an error, aren't they? Single and an error, isn't that what they ruled? I have not, yes, they are going to charge die with an error. It will be a one base hit and an error, so take away the double. And give Die an error, allowing Biggio to advance to second. And Jeff Bagwell is used to this. This will be the 19th time this year he's been intentionally walked. How many overall? 
127. Yeah, that's right in there with the Sheffield number. Sheffield's walked 135 times, and that was leading the league. We'll check and see if it still is. Sheffield 135, and Bonds 135. Bagwell right behind him. So they'll take their chances with Sean Barry with the bases loaded. It was Sean Barry's base hit in the first inning that scored the first Houston run and drove in his 92nd run of the year. Now then, Pete, if you're the Houston Astros, you've got to capitalize on these situations in these tough games. Not only do they have Smoltz and Maddox in this series, they go down to Florida to take on Kevin Brown, who's leading the league in ERA, and then Al Leiter, who's always tough. You've got a chance to lead Smoltz and the Braves in Atlanta and add to your lead. Got to jump on it. And conversely, if you're the Atlanta Braves, you saw Daryl Kyle pitch out of a bases loaded jam in the first inning. You got to try to get yourself out of this one. Barry doesn't run all that well. Double play a possibility. You can get him to hit a ground ball. Upstairs, ball one. Yeah, he does not run well. He's got a very bad shoulder. He, if nothing else, by example. He has been a great leader for this ball club because he's probably going to have to have some type of corrective surgery on that shoulder in the offseason. Bases loaded, one man out. There's a strike in the count, one ball, one strike. Boy, did that have something on it. Montreal has jumped on top of New York. Bottom of the third Olympic Stadium, Jeff Vicero against Jason Isringhausen. Well, at first, Biggio at second, Cangelosi at third, with only one out. It's going to be tough to turn two here, but we'll see if Lemke can do it. He can. Chipper Jones had to go to the hole to come up with that ball. Lemke turned it beautifully, 6 4 3, and Smoltz is out of the inning. So the Astros with the bases loaded and one man out could not score. We go to the bottom half of the third, still 1 0 Houston. This year, TBS turns 20 with a coast to coast big birthday bash. TBS, happy birthday. From the Big Apple to the Golden Gate, we're coming to a town near you with birthday games, big prizes, and the world's largest birthday cake hot air balloon. Hey, Straight away center, Cangelosi had him played almost perfectly. Hardly has to move. One down. Grissom retired. And that'll bring up Terry Pendleton, who drew a walk in the first inning. Good job by Smoltz to get out of that inning. Got some help from Chipper Jones and especially from Mark Lemke, who made a nice turn at second. Out of play by Pendleton, the count 0 1. Left handers have done well against Daryl Kyle this year. 312 average with nine of the 15 home runs he's allowed. Count even now, 1 and 1. strikes Braves didn't get into the wheat till the wee hours of this morning most of them didn't arrive home until maybe three to four o'clock three thirty four o'clock 
game tonight and then turn around and play a day game tomorrow. And the Astros were already here. They had the benefit of a day off after finishing that series in Colorado on Sunday. One two pitch. That's all for Pendleton. Good catch by Eusebio and he applies the tag. Fourth strikeout for Daryl Kyle. Three out of the last four he's faced. Two men gone now in the bottom of the third. And the batter will be Chipper Jones. He had a base hit in the first inning, extending his hitting streak to 10 games. He takes a strike on one. And an 18 game hitting streak earlier this year. There's a line drive right center field. Cangelosi can't come up with it. Now he kicks it. Chipper on his way to second. Cangelosi gets the throw back. Chipper Jones pulls into second. Second hit allowed by Kyle and Chipper Jones has them both. That was almost a case where Cangelosi got too close to the baseball, Pete. He wasn't going to catch it, but the ball took a bite, almost like a golf ball on a green, took a funny bounce and bounced back to him. And he couldn't smother it. The Astros capitalized on a two out double by Bagwell in the first inning. Maybe the Braves can do the same thing. 31st double for Chipper Jones this year. He's at second with two outs for Fred McGriff. Hit into a force play his first time up. Fouls back the first one 0 and 1. Astros doing some scoreboard watching as well. Chicago playing at St. Louis tonight. Cardinals two and a half up on Houston. No score in that game at the end of one. Montreal, meanwhile, now two nothing over the Mets. Expo still batting bottom of the third. RBI singles from Moise Salou and Henry Rodriguez in that inning. Final regular season homestand here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. These two with Houston and five games with Montreal then whatever postseason games are played here and that'll pull the curtain down on a 30 year run here in Atlanta. As the Braves move across the street to the new stadium for next year. That five game series with Montreal a rare five game series in the major leagues caused by the early exit of the Braves just before the Olympics to give ACOG a chance to get the stadium ready for the baseball competition. So they only had a two game series with the Expos back in July. It's even now two and two on Fred McGriff. That's a pitch that you see so many left hand hitters give up on that pitch looks like it's going to be outside. And that sharp break at the end brings it back over the outside corner. It's sometimes the way it comes out of the pitcher's hand Pete it looks like when it comes up out of the hand high looks like there's no way the ball is going to be able to come back in for a strike. Two and two now McGriff Jones at second two outs. Foul off at the plate still two and two. But he can really do a good job of disrupting your timing talking about Kyle. Not only will he try to come in the back door with that breaking ball like he did for the called strike but he'll drop it down and in a little bit harder and then he'll come back with a fastball as he did there. Gave Fred a little trouble catching up. Kyle and Eusebio having trouble getting together on that pitch. He's frustrating. Daryl Kyle is not only as a hitter, but to his team, to his organization. I mean, he, he is so capable and can be so dominating as we've talked about. It's just putting some consistency together. Here's the 2 2 now to McGriff. He got him inside corner. That's two strikeouts in the inning. That is five strikeouts in the game for Kyle. Braves leave a runner at second. Atlanta has stranded four over the first three innings. Still 1 0 Houston. Got him. 
Eusebio had trouble pulling the trigger his first time up. Had a couple of check swings. He fans for the second time. And Smoltz has number four. Perfect location outside corner about knee high. He's now just three away from Phil Necro's Atlanta record of 262 strikeouts in the season. And Orlando Miller was a strikeout victim in the second inning. Has 110 strikeouts this year, 14 walks. He does have some long ones, 14 home runs, but by far too many strikeouts to walks for Orlando Miller. Good swing, but he fouled it back. He's hit a couple of game winners for him since the All-Star break. And they picked up a former Astro, Andohar Cedeno, the other day. Got him from the Detroit Tigers to help shore up a little bit defensively, although Cedeno as well considered more of an offensive shortstop than a defensive player. He's already out for the year. Got hurt right away. Did he? I didn't yes. know that. Only had two at bats. That just missed. One and one. Daniel had started the year with the Padres and got traded to the Tigers. Almost threw it away. Nice play by McGriff to save Smoltz. Derek May doesn't run very often. He's two for four on the year. Breaking ball missed two and one. I don't know if that was a tip or not, but as soon as Galante got through giving the signs, Bell took a quick look at second. But he's not running. Pitch misses low again, three and one. Hard to walk this guy. We mentioned he only had 14 walks all year, and four of those were intentional. Throw a fastball to Orlando Miller when you're behind in the count. That's why he hit it hard, but looks like it might be playable for Grissom. Shy of the warning track, he's got it. And the inning comes to an end. So Smoltz gives up a single to Derek May, but nothing else. Astros strand another runner. That's four for them on the evening. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still one to nothing, Houston. As we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning, a look at tonight's athletic trivia question. We'll give you the answer to it. It was the first Brave to get a hit during the first regular season game in this ballpark. And the answer, Rico Carti. The big boy. He could hit. Just ask him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he could hit in the summertime. He could hit in the wintertime. He hit all year round. One nothing Astros bottom of the fourth Klesko Lopez and die do up for Atlanta. Ryan drew a walk to load the bases in the first inning first pitch swinging sends a three hopper out to Biggio one pitch one out. Braves had the bases loaded one out but then Javi Lopez hit a check swing bouncer off the plate that Biggio bobbled he dropped it but he dropped it right on the bag and it bounced right back up to him he grabbed it and stepped on the base to end the inning. Javi hitting 276. Next ball one. Looks like the Indians might be the first team in the postseason. If they beat the White Sox tonight, they clinch the Central Division. They're up seven to one in the second inning. Kevin Seitzer, grand slam home run. That one hurt. Javi banged it off his left foot. He's going to walk it off, and Jeff Porter's going to come out, got him right off the inside of the left ankle 
Not much padding there. Kevin Seitzer's been a great pickup for the Indians, and he? he's having fun. Yes. Well, the Braves of this slump they've fallen into have relinquished the role as the team with the best record in baseball to Cleveland. Cleveland's got 90 wins right now. The Braves have 88. Well, you can see the the cold coming off that sock. And anything to take the pain away in that spot. That is a tough place to hit a ball off your foot. One time I was playing in, in Mexico in the Winter Leagues, Pete. We had a pitcher get hit with a line drive right off his forehead. And we didn't have exactly what you would call trained medical personnel in the dugout, but we did have a trainer and he went running out with the spray and was trying to spray the guy's forehead. <laughs> Javi oh, almost did it again. One and two. That's the last thing you want to do is mm. hit another one there. A lot of pitchers will pitch that way, though. They'll give you the same pitch in the same spot oh, yeah. and see if they can make it do it again. Dirty, rotten scoundrels. Two and two, the count. Javi was two for 14 in the series at New York. One for one tonight. Oh, he got away with one there. Still two and two. Boy, that breaking ball had some bite on it, didn't it? Full count. But you can you can see why Daryl Kyle gets wild at times though because his release point on that one was so different from the release point on some of the ones he's thrown for strikes. He's way out almost a sidearm breaking ball there. Watch where he lets that one go from. It's almost like he was going to make sure he didn't make a mistake with it, so he threw it at the left-handed batter's box, did it again, but Javi went after that one. Six strikeouts. Well, Javi's going to be kicking himself because. That pitch missed by a foot and a half. Almost the same pitch in the same spot. Mm -hmm. Way off the plate. Yeah. Bobby couldn't hang, couldn't hold off. His previous high was 141 strikeouts, so he blew by that quite a while ago. Same breaking ball to Jermaine Dye, but he did not go around. The ball and no strikes. Jermaine lined out to left field his first time up, hit it deep and Back Derek May up to the wall. Fights one off out behind second. Miller called off by Bezio, who gloves it. And a one, two, three inning for Daryl Kyle. Braves are gone in the fourth. We head to the fifth inning. Still one. To no rain in the forecast tonight here in Atlanta. Gorgeous night for baseball, and it's supposed to be even better tomorrow for the business fan special that we'll have for you at 105 here on TBS. John Smoltz works to the pitcher, Daryl Kyle, who slices one into right center, and Marquise Grissom runs it down. Nice play. He was playing very shallow. He had him shaded a little bit toward right center field. This ball had some carry to it, though. Not only did Grissom have to go toward the gap, he had to go back on it. But he covers so much ground and goes back on ball so well. It's funny how after watching Marquise play for a couple of years how you just assume or, or you already can tell which ones he's going to catch when he goes after a ball like that. Most of the ones that you know he might have a little trouble with are the ones hit deep over his head since he plays shallow. And when you just see him turn his back to the infield you know well can't get to that. One. And Cangelosi gets plunked on the hand. He was not able to get out of the way. And his hand was on the bat, and Randy Marsh is going to say he was he's going to get first base. Now that's similar to a play that happened to Brett Butler the other night. If you saw that replay, and that pitch was called a foul ball, the one that broke Butler's hand. You're going to hear this one. Listen. 
Ouch. He didn't do much to get out of the way of that one either. He must have thought the ball was going to come back over the inside part of the plate. That's the 80th time this year that a Houston Astro player has been hit by a pitch. They already set the National League record. The old record was 78. Montreal in 1978 and St. Louis in 1910. 80 times this year Astros have been hit by a pitch. Now remember. Cangelosi hit a couple of flares off the end of the bat. And maybe that's why Smoltz was going to come in. He wasn't trying to hit him, but he wanted to make sure he got the ball in on him so he couldn't reach out and slap another well, one. Well, he's so close to the plate. If, yeah. you, if you come in at all, he's right on top of the plate. They had some problems when Cangelosi was with the Mets a few years ago. You might remember that, but that was a different circumstance. That was right after Brian Thompson had hit a grand slam off of Smoltz. Vigio takes a good breaking ball 0 and 1. Craig has flied out. He singled into right center field his last time up. The ball was not handled cleanly by Jermaine Dye. He was charged with an error. Put runners at second and third. They walk Bagwell to load him up, but Sean Barry hit into a 6-4-3 double play. And if you're curious if Craig Vigio uses pine tar, you might just take a look at his helmet. <laughs> Carries a portable supply. Uh huh. That helmet's been to war. He's even lost a few of the points off his star and the Astro at logo. Vigio steps out and Cangelosi heads back to first. Good breaking ball again. Smoltz quickly ahead one and two. That hit batsman on John Cangelosi ties a major league record. Blue Jays tied it. Earlier in the week, Washington Senators got hit 80 times in 1911, so that mm. record has stood for a long time. And oddly enough, only the second batter, John Smoltz, has hit all year. As much as he pitches inside, only the second batter he's hit. Breaking ball, lifted into left field, one handed toward Plesco, but he's got it right at him, two down. And Bagwell will hit after doubling with two out in the first inning. He scored on a base hit by Sean Barry. Barry's 92nd RBI of the year, and that's the only run of the game. Bagwell, in addition to his 115 RBIs, he scored 105 runs. 47 doubles leads the league. A 452 on base percentage. Angelosi back. He is 17 out of 25 in stolen bases. But with two out, I don't think I'd want to take the bat out of Jeff Bagwell's hands by sending Cangelosi and having him steal second. Up and into Bagwell. Well, he gets hit a lot because he kind of dives into the ball, as so many hitters do nowadays. But he was one of the first of the new breed of young hitters that came up here with that style of hitting. Well, and he suffered for it, too. He's been hit on the yes. hand several times. He's had his left hand broken several times. He was the first one to start wearing that padded batting glove. Jeff Blauser has one of those now, by the way. Fastball strike. It is a hard protective device that attaches to the bat of that back of that glove. 
but he's right on top of the plate. You're right, Pete. He does not get cheated. You talk about putting every ounce of effort into a swing. But he holds at, nothing back. But good balance, too, yeah. in the process. You know, his follow-through is not coming away from the plate. He's falling across the plate. More indication that he's diving into the ball a little bit. His head may have come off on that swing a little bit. It was so strong, but he doesn't miss many, you know. Very tough hitter in this situation. There goes Cangelosi. The pitch is high, and they got him by a mile. So if nothing else, Bagwell will lead off the inning. He was in the hole one and two, and maybe Terry Collins would rather see him lead off than hit with a runner at first. We played four and a half. One nothing, Houston. of the way and uh, I guess if you know anything about pitching when you see the names Daryl Kyle and John Smoltz you have a pretty good chance a lot of strikeouts and low scoring ball game. Yeah Daryl Kyle has really pitched well his control has not let him down to this point in the game and when he's got his control as you know better than I he is tough. Mark Lemke to lead it off. Lemke taking a few extra seconds to get out there on that final out of the inning the tag at second on the attempted stolen base. Angelosi slid hard in the Lemke. Looked like his right foot, so Mark taking it gingerly into the dugout. Lemke smokes. And Lemke doesn't waste any time. Sends one into center field for a base hit. Yeah, right there, the left leg. I wonder if that slide had anything to do with getting hit by a pitcher who hit you a couple years ago and started a big fight. Could be. Very well could be. That's one way you see base runners get even. Astros are looking for a sacrifice from John Smoltz. Barry creeps in at third. First one is outside and it's 1-0. and oh. Remember, if you watch the Braves, Bobby Cox will send word to Jimmy Williams that if they are in close and they're charging, turn that... Turn him loose. Turn the pitcher loose. He gives his hitters more liberties than I think any manager I have been around. Smoltz has been successful in this situation a lot this year. Shows Bunn again. And it's a beauty. Bagwell with one play. Cabigio, sacrifice work. Tying run in scoring position. Sacrifice number 13 for John Smoltz. The old look from RoboCam. He'll deaden this ball. It is almost stopped by the time Bagwell gets it, has time to look. That's the way the pigeons see the plays develop from the roof of the ballpark. One out, top of the batting order. Marquise Grissom hitless in two trips. Struck out swinging. Fly ball to deep center field. First one outside, 1 0. That slide at second, and the fact that Lemke a little bit banged up might come into play right here if Grissom sends a single to the outfield. A couple of good arms, one in left and one in right. Not much of an arm by center fielder John Cangelosi, but Bell and May can throw. We will see. Here comes Cangelosi, here comes Lemke, and here comes the throw. Nowhere near him. What a terrible throw. And Daryl Kyle didn't do his job. He didn't get back there to back up, and it cost him a base. That was a horrible throw. You're right. So Grissom picked on the one guy in the outfield with the bad arm, and the Braves have tied it. Boy, you had that one right. He makes an awful throw. A solid single. A two-hopper, and John just tries to throw it a little too hard. Looked like for a second he was going to try to run it to the plate. And you can see Kyle not 
He was doing play by play down there instead of getting back and doing his job. Being a spectator will cost you in close ball games. And right now the Braves with the potential go ahead run moving on up to second base Marquise Grissom there. Here's Terry Pendleton. It's going to be an error on the throw by the center fielder. Third ball for a strike. But your point is a good one. They could very easily give an air of omission to Daryl Kyle. They don't do that. That's not in the book, I guess. That should be, though. Because that's that's where if he's doing his job, the Braves now have a runner. Would have a run in, but they'd have a runner at first and a double play still in order. Upstairs, one ball, one strike. Breaking balls for Pendleton, and this one misses for ball two. Funny, everybody else is pitching him fastballs up. Kyle has a good curveball, but he also has an exceptional fastball. Some of the other stores around the National League and the American League. Well, I'd love to be there for that series. Wouldn't you like to see that? New York, Baltimore, and Baltimore. I bet both managers very frustrated, though. Inside corner, there's the fastball, and it's two and two. They've got Cohn and Mussina set to go, and they get the game started, and they both warm up, and they both pitch a little, and now they sit for an hour. When will they be able to come back, especially Cohn? You basically lose him for the whole series, I bet, at this point. That's a better break, I guess, for Baltimore. They're a little deeper in pitching than either Yankees starting pitcher. Two balls, two strikes. Change there. It's still two and two. Pendleton normally a good hitter with runners in scoring position, but since about All Star break, the hits have been few and far between for Terry Pendleton. St. Louis getting bigger. Full count three and two. Kyle pulled another rock there. Orlando yes, Miller was did. standing at second base, begging for the ball. The whole left side was open, and he went ahead to the plate. You got a smart hitter in Terry Pendleton too. If he gets that breaking ball down just a little, all he had to do is reach out and tap it and play pepper, and you know he would have tried it. Full count, payoff pitch, due penalty. They're trying to keep Grissom close. But Miller getting out of position a lot of the time. Where was that pitch? A base on ball, a third. I guess it was it was low when he caught it, but boy, going over the plate, that was a pretty good pitch, and you can see Kyle, he wanted hey, that one badly. If that ain't a strike, grits ain't groceries. <laughs> That is one of the hardest pitches, though, to, and breaking ball pitchers, curveballers will tell you that is one of the hardest pitchers to get an umpire to call because they call it where they, where it's caught. Here's Chipper Jones, not where it crosses the plate. This one is high and it's one and zero. Oh. Did you have that trouble? Because I know you threw your breaking ball a lot. You're, you've got more. You've got a better chance of getting strikes on. Pitches swung at, and the second most often call strike is the one you don't want them to swing at the hanger. You start at shoulder high, have it drop in belt high, they'll call that one. They don't usually get too many opportunities to. Out of play, one and one. That's usually the one that comes up there with a big smile on it saying, Hit me, and they do. That's what John Sherholz was talking about, Tom Flash Gordon over at Kansas yeah. City when he was there. Good curveball. Said his curveball was too good. They almost had to teach him to throw it not so good so he'd get a call every now and then. You'll see most guys with big curveballs. I know Burke Blylevin worked on short in his. Mike Witt, fine curveball pitcher for the California Angels. 
You have to learn a shorter one. You can throw for the strikes. But a break for the Braves on that call. Two and one, and it may have upset Kyle a little. Six strikeouts and three walks to this point. Four hits. And a one one ball game. Astros looking for the double play. Ball three inside. Didn't miss much by much for that one either. If you poll the players in the National League, most of them will tell you they consider Randy Marsh more of a hitter's umpire than a pitcher's umpire. And that's holding true to form tonight. Chipper Jones might get a pitch to handle here. It's three and one. Nope, ball four loads him up. Fourth walk issued by Kyle. Kyle throughout his whole career, as Brent Strom makes his way to the mound, has been somewhat of a contradiction. When he's good, he's very good. And when he struggles, it's usually because of control. He's coming off of one of his career best outings against the Philadelphia Phillies. Complete game. Well, you know, you always talk about the uh, the borderline pitch, and if you don't have the control consistently, it's going to go against you. Now, he's certainly had a couple of those tonight. I'm not saying Randy Marsh is wrong, but a couple have been right there where you're going to get an argument either way, and it's gone the other way for... Or if you're at Lavin or Maddox, you're going to get them because you're consistently there. And in defense of the umpire a little bit, when you have a pitcher that throws in one area over and over, you can settle in and look there. But if you have a pitcher who throws it all over the ballpark, this umpire has to move to the left shoulder, to the right shoulder, up, down. Kind of hard to get consistent calls. Well, he's going to have to make some pitches now. Base is loaded. Grissom at third, Pendleton at second, Jones at first, and McGriff the batter. Doesn't get the curveball. Couple cranking up down the left field line. Looks like Jones and Mormon. Mormon the lefty. Jones from the Atlanta area. Yeah, lives now in uh, it, Tennessee, I think. Let me check him out. I know he's from Marietta. No balls, one strike. A little bit inside, one and one. Then all of a sudden you figure, well, I've got to be too fine. I've got to make perfect pitches. Control might get better, but quality suffers. See what McGriff can do with it. It's one and one. Let's try Pell City, Alabama. Okay? Where he lives? Yeah. That's a nice little thing. And not that far from Tennessee. Really. By the way, two run homer by Moises Alou is 20th. It's 4 1 Montreal in the fifth over the Mets. The 1 1 to McGriff. Inside corner. Maybe the best pitch of the inning for Darrell Kyle, and it's 1 and 2. of Southern California Garden Grove almost right there in the shadow of Anaheim Stadium and the Crystal Cathedral huh? all right there product of Chafee College the riff stays alive fouls away the curveball still one and two this makes a big difference to Kyle now doesn't it he's ahead one and two now he can throw his curveball and I worry about it if he misses the one he's got two more shots and with Tony Eusebio, his reputation is that, he, that he's one you can throw the curveball in the dirt. He will give you every effort to stop it. Astros used to have a fine catcher who was good at that, who didn't get to play as much as he should have. Luis Pujols, who coaches first now for Montreal. There's that breaking ball, and there's that block. McGriff is gone. Strikeout number seven for Kyle, and some good pitching to Fred McGriff. But he's still not out of the woods. He's got to get out. Ryan Klesko, nice stop for Tony Eusebio. That's just what we're talking about. He can throw that pitch without worrying about it. It's nowhere near the strike zone, but Fred 
down in the count can't take any chances and chases a pitch that's impossible for him to hit. Both teams have had some great chances here tonight so far been unable to cash them in. So Grissom is still at third Pendleton still at second Chipper Jones still at first. Flesco has walked and he's grounded to second. That is a start. In real life maybe but not on the scoreboard. Hey. That ball is coming in about protector high and dropping above the knees. I heard it put quite that well. Way. It's, it's a point needed to be made. Bye bye. Off the wall. Extra bases. Here comes Grissom. Here comes Pendleton. Jones will score. It's a bases clearing double for Clusco. And the Braves take a four to one lead. And that's what the Braves have been lacking. Somebody to pick somebody else up. McGriff strikes out. You think the chance is going down the chute? Ryan Clusco takes it upon himself. Clears the bases. He now has 92 RBI. If he gets the call on the curveball, that is a pitch there. I guarantee you he doesn't make. But he did make it. He's the one who threw it down the middle. He's the one who's given up four. He's the one who still needs to get out Javi Lopez. Fouled away. 0 oh and 1. Lopez, this at bat, wearing one of those ankle protector guards. If he beat himself up pretty good last time up. Right about where that logo is is where he hit himself with the foul ball. The one down low. Toward third, foul ball. What do you think baseball players will look like? I mean, uniform and protection wise in five or ten years? I mean, just think of all the changes in the last decade as far as protection, the shin guards, and now that the things Bagwell uses to protect his hands and the elbows and everything. Early Star Trek. Yeah, it's going to be like that, or like NASA, which I guess saying the same thing. Sort of neat. Lopez in a hole, 0 and 2. The old David Cole Lareda sidearm. Two strikeouts in the inning for Daryl Kyle, but the Braves put a four spot on the board. They do it on three hits and leave a runner stranded. Through five, it's four to one Braves. Hey, John Smoltz pitching well. Ryan Klusko has the big Atlanta hit in the game. You saw that promo for the Grand Slam coming up the golf tournament on. TBS, you're working one. The Saracen Cup on huh? late October. Congratulations. Thank you. Up at Chateau Elon. Yeah, uh, early November, uh, one group of golf announcers gets to go to Hawaii, one gets to go to North Georgia. You win. You're in heaven anyway. You're playing <laughs> golf in wine country. <laughs> Here's Bagwell. Braves on top four to one. Good breaking ball from Spoltz. It's 0 and 1. I have no argument for that. There you go. That's Chateau Elan. It's quite a place this. Yeah. I've never been up there. Spectacular. That's going to be a marvelous event. I to see TBS doing more and more golf. Down low, it's one and one. PGA Tour, the players would like to see them do the Hawaiian Open again because the other way it's being done, they have to get up at 6.30 and 7 and tee off in the dew with TBS. I think the first times are around 10 in Hawaii. Him doing away. Something wet was on the fairways. Outside, it's two and one. What you want out of John Smoltz and what he wants right now is to follow his team's offense with a good one, two, three inning. Four runs, five hits in an air for the Braves. One five and one for the Astros. The big blow, a three run double by Ryan Clusco. Clutch double, two out. At Pendleton. Double pump, high throw. That's why McGriff 6-5. That's why you're glad he's 6-5, one out. That really does make a difference, too. I remember a little guy named Bob Beal. Remember him? Yeah. He used to play some first base for us, was about 5'8. 
And he was a fine first baseman, but all the infielders were psyched out because they'd look over there and there was such a small target. Really, I'm not I'm not kidding. They had an awful time making routine throws that with a big guy over there, they made all the time. Here's Sean Barry, a single, he's grounded into a double play, 6 4 3, finds himself down in the count, 0 and 1. They got themselves a battle going in St. Louis. The Cubs and the Cardinals are now in the bottom of the fourth. Zeros on the scoreboard. Ron Gant just singled in a run. To make one, one to nothing, up. St. Louis. And I know that they're keeping their eye on the scoreboard with interest to this game. 0 and 2 to Barry. There's that score. Still raining in New York where the Orioles are trying to play. They played an inning. Burned up a couple of pitchers. And now they sit. Good pitch. One, two, three, U turn. And Smoltz has strikeout number five. He has 230 for the year. And every out now, I think, gets a little closer to nailing down that Cy Young Award for him, don't you? Yes, I do. But he doesn't, you know, he has to continue to pitch well, or there's some other pretty worthy candidates. Boy, the guy who has really gotten a shaft this year, and he is familiar to local folks, Kevin Brown. What a year he is having in every category but wins. Is Derek Bell. He struck out, flied to left, doesn't get the breaking ball, 0-1. But rightly or wrongly, do you agree with me? Wins is what you have to go by because that's what this game is all about. Wins I, or saves. Or but I don't think, I think that's one of the things you have to go by, but that does not reflect how well a pitcher pitches. 0 oh 2. Because if you can breathe and throw strikes on a good scoring ball club, but I think that the, it is one of the ingredients. I don't think you can evaluate a pitcher on anyone. If that's that's probably no. the best way. Any one stat. But to me, 20% of it or less should be the wins. Pitchers get too much credit for winning, too much blame for losing. Hey, a little side wheel action of his own from Spoke. He sets down Bell. Two strikeouts in the inning and the kind of inning you want out of your pitcher after you give him four. From the side, Bell's gone. Through five and a half. Three run lead for the Braves. Some work going on across the way in the new ballpark, but I don't think, Skip, that dimensions of that mound will fly. If so, I know you're going to make a comeback. I'll be there. Bray's pitching already tough enough without giving him that advantage. Good to know that they're working late into the night to make sure that field is ready for us next year. Bray's with four in the bottom of the fifth, lead at four to one. They sent eight men to bat. Jermaine Dye will lead it off here in the sixth. There's a curveball I was telling you that the only one you'll get called. That's a hanger. But that time, Dye couldn't pull the trigger, and it's 0 and 1. Back our way, no balls, two strikes. Good to see Larry Durker recuperating. Dirk's, uh, you know, been. He's had all sorts some of things trucks. pop around, including a bad hand, got himself a camouflage cast. You ever seen one of those? No. But he looks good and healing. Well, he's a good guy. He is a good guy. He's One and two. Good, pretty good twirler, too. Yes, he was. There he is. Show us that camouflage cast, Dirk. On his right hand there. Nice thumb. <laughs> Out of play. It's one and two still. Okay, from Sylacauga, Alabama. Nice play. Into left field, a hanger. And He's a good breaking ball hitter, isn't he? Keeps those hands back. He stands at first for Mark Lemke. Lemke has struck out, singled, and scored the first run of the ball game for the Braves. One out of two, and now chasing that 250 mark. He's a couple points shy. Mormon is again throwing. Alvin Mormon, the left hander. Ground ball back to Kyle could be two. He'll go to Miller for one. To Bagwell, that's as easy as it comes. One six three on the double play, and just as 
quick as it started, now the bases are clean. Two outs for John Smokes. Over in the American League, we were talking about some of the scorers uh, of note. Albert Bell got a leadoff single, top of the fourth inning. That's his 1,000th hit of his major league career. And by the way, congratulations to Paul Molitor. Now with 3,001 hits, got it against Kansas City. That is quite an accomplishment. Very happy for him. First pitch to Smoltz is a strike. Solo home run by Lenny Webster to left center field with one out in the sixth off Isringhausen. It's now five to one Expos. Wouldn't it be nice for Albert Bell and for all of baseball, really, if he's that's a thousand hits? He's a wonderful, wonderful player. If he just cool it a little bit, be a happy guy, and enjoy his ability. That's right. Make a lot of other people happy too. One and two. Stays too high, and it's two and two. Down the right field line, Bell was shaded over there, but he'll run out of room just shy of the Braves bullpen. I see Bell is going with the low pants look here. Remember, we saw them in Houston. He had it. And I'm pulled all the way up. A lot of players, I guess, do that. There's have a wear them one way, have a couple hits, so wear them that way for a while. Full count to Smoltz. They drive your equipment manager nuts, don't you? That's normally pretty easy. Did he go? Uh uh. A walk. So after getting the ground ball double play Kyle walks the pitcher that's five walks for him coming out of a game against Philadelphia where he went nine and didn't walk anybody. The smokes will stand at first for Marquise Grissom. Would you like to work with him a guy with that kind of stuff. I think it'd be fun. Because very there are a lot of pitchers pitching in the big leagues who don't have his ability. And I would guess probably for Brent Strom it may be very frustrating because I think you'd like to pick out one thing. There's that breaking ball that misses low and it's one to know you'd like to be able to pick out one thing and say change this but I don't think you can. With a guy like Daryl Kyle and the first thing you got to figure out is do you want to work on his mechanics from the neck up or the neck down. The Good neck up there, is one and one the neck up I would think would be tougher. I think it helps to know a lot about a player's personality. What's what's he like? Some you know, some guys like it when it's on the line. Some guys would rather pitch down one run. Some guys like pitching for a contender. Some are better off pitching for a second division club. Almost hits Grissom when it's two and one. He has plunked 14 men this year. So you know that he'll come inside if nothing else. And he has to do it. If you're a breaking ball pitcher as he is, you have to come inside and follow it up with a good curveball there, two and two. You think he throws his curveball too much? I personally do, but you know a lot more about it than I do. As good a fastball as he has. I don't know that he throws it too much. Sometimes the count that he's surprised that he, which may be a, another way of saying that's right skip, but I think the count that he, he throws it in. How was that? Can, year. I, can I stick around you're, for another year? You're getting back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Up the middle, but Miller is there. He'll take the short route to Biggio, and that'll do it for the Braves in the sixth inning. No runs a hit, no errors, and one left. Six complete, a three-run lead, four to one Braves. We have a moment to give us a chance to look at our take a look at our Hardy's leaderboard. Major League victories this year. John Smoltz atop the heap, tied with Andy Pettit. Mike Messina trying to get his 20th tonight. Venice to follow Pat Hingen right there fine pitcher for Toronto. So that's a look at our Hardy's leaderboard in Major League wins and we're going to have ourselves a change Skip, out in second base. Yeah Raphael Bell you had uh, Don talked about Lemke getting banged up by Cangelosi on a slide and he's been banged up anyway going into this game so Raphael Belliard takes his place at second base if we find anything about Mark's condition. I don't think it's anything serious because he got a base hit. And Scored from second on a subsequent hit by Grissom, but we'll try to find out what's what from our PR department, the Braves PR department. 
and let you know Derek May check swing strike 0 and 1. May has fly to left and he is single. 4 1 Atlanta our score. Smoltz is breezing at the moment. Having a lot of success against lefties with his third pitch at split finger fastball, two speeds on it. He wants to throw it again now. He'll throw it a little harder and use it for an out pitch. The 0 2. Blowing away. A ball and two strikes. Same two teams tomorrow. It's a business persons or business fans special day game. Right. At one time. Yeah, that too. At 110, we'll have it for you at 105. I almost slipped and called it a businessman special on radio. Boy, you can't do that. Anymore. Can't have Ladies' Day anymore, either, can you? I don't think so. The 2 2 pitch. Rounded foul, pass first. So wear a dress if you want, but come to the game at 110 tomorrow. And if you're in doubt, wear kilts. Right. The 2-2 two -two pitch, here it is. Right off the end of the bat. We've mentioned it many times before, but I guess it bears repeating. Derek's dad, Davey May, made some history in Atlanta. I'm going to win a trivia bet. You might get away with this. Traded for. Tell you just saw on a commercial on the local side, Henry Aaron. Henry went to Milwaukee, and Davy May, a good left hand hitter, came to Atlanta. Over the pitcher's head, Belliard, an early chance, bad hop, throws late. See how they score. It's a boot. Even if he comes up after the bad hop. The first boot, he would have been okay. The second boot cost him. Sometimes when you hit a ball on the end of the bat, you get some odd spin on it. Normally one of the best fielders around. Watch and see if that bounces right up on the heel of his glove. He's expecting it to go down low. And that tricky hop right off the cut of the grass there, right up against his chest. A tough error to give, but an error it was. Tony Eusebio, the banner. John's got a pitch around it. It's a 4-1 game. He has the lead. Fast ball high and away. One ball, no strikes. Mormon up again in the Houston bullpen. Eusebio is the seventh hitter in the order. Then Orlando Miller, and then the pitcher Dale Kyle is due. Renner at first, nobody out. Top of the seventh. High pop foul out of play. Evens it up. A ball and a strike. Two ways to get out Eusebio he is a free swinger and will chase breaking balls but watch if you watch how he holds the bat in his hands it takes him a little while has to make a couple of moves to get it started so he has trouble handling fastballs above the belt leans right out over the plate good play McGriff hitting over or two out rather excuse me that ball was ticketed for right field but Fred reacted beautifully. There's a break for John. That ball was sucked. It erases the bell yard air. Two away. That's a fastball that Eusebio can handle down and out over the plate without a runner on. I'm not sure that it, that would not have been a base hit. But McGriff stepped off after the runner took off and stepped right into a perfect zone defense. So Orlando Miller bats. He's 0 for 2. He flied to deep center his last time. Steve Reich outside corner. Smoltz rolling merrily along. Seeking his 22nd victory of the year. He leads four to one. The run came in the first. A couple of hits with two out. Braves answered with four in the fifth. Grissom and RBI. A three run double for Klesko with two out. 0 and 2. They're still waiting in New York trying to play the Orioles and Yankees. I bet they got a huge crowd for that one in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, they'll be there for a while for that one. I think the American League does have a curfew, though. 11 o'clock or something? You can't? Uh, it's or later, 1 o'clock? It's later maybe. than that. I don't think you can start an inning after 1. High pop foul out of play. Still 0 2. John Smoltz getting frisky. That's twice he's dropped down from the side 
getting two strikes. That pitch is a heck of a lot easier if you're very flexible, which he is. There are some I know who would be immediately heading for the whirlpool after a pitch like that. And for the local chiropractor. Another 0 2 pitch is forthcoming. And it's ripped into left center. Nobody's going to get that ball. Boy, the double play looks big now. Miller is on his way to second. He'll pull in there with a two out double. So John's not out of the woods in the seventh inning yet. And we'll get a pinch hitter. It's good hitting by Miller. Dives into the ball because that pitch is on the outside corner. But he is another one of those Astros hitters if you watch them. They take a very short stride. Got to be hard to fool them because none of them really take the long big strides on that ball right there. Miller just picked his left foot up sent it right back down. Bill Spears comes out to pinch hit here with a runner at second and two out. He's hitting 258 six homers 29 RBI. 102 pitches for Darrell Kyle 62 of them strikes or 60 of them strikes 42 of them all. He leaves trailing 4 1 with a runner at second and two out. The left hand hitter waits and Smoltz goes to work. The hits are even at six. First pitch swinging, he doesn't get it 0 and 1. Florida hammering the Phillies tonight 9 to 1. Montreal winning five to one in the seventh. Not much of a batting average for Spires coming off the bench, but when he does get hits, it's usually for extra bases. Runner at second, two down. Right in there. So Smoltz ahead in the count one and two. Used to be John basically had one or two weapons to dispose of you with and he had already shown them to you by this far in the count. But yet right now he still hasn't shown him his best fastball. He still hasn't shown him his best split finger and he hasn't shown him his slider. So he has three or four ways he can go to finish off a hitter now. And doesn't have to throw a strike right here. Inning over. Smoltz continues to roll merrily along. Seven strikeouts for him tonight. 232 on the air. One hit. No runs. One air, one left. Bottom of the seventh. Four to one, Atlanta. This has just tied Phil Necro for the Braves. Single season strikeout record 262. He's a cinch to go beyond that. Charlie Buffington, Buffington pitch back. Way back there. Montreal now up six to one. Sacrifice fly by Henry Rodriguez. They're going to win. Alvin Mormon on to pitch. Mormon, four and one, a 5.09 earned run average. And the left hander gets ready to face Terry Pendleton, who will turn around and hit from the right side. The job that Brent Strom has been trying to do on Alvin Mormon. They love his stuff. But walks in the strikeouts about the same. He's averaging right at five per nine innings. Walks, that is. Pendleton is one at bat. He struck out. He has walked twice. He has scored a run. Pendleton, Jones, McGriff leading off here in the seventh for Atlanta. A little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. A 110 game tomorrow, 105 TV 10. A little bit outside, 2 0 the count. Mormon out of Rockingham, North Carolina, still lives there. He's out of Wingate College. Has a degree, a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration. And he throws a strike. It's two and one. 
Where'd they get him from? Selected by Houston in the 39th round of the 1987 draft. So they drafted him. He was from yeah. their organization. Says they selected him in the 87 draft, but he didn't start pitching until 91. Maybe it's one of those deals where they drafted him. There's a walk to Pendleton to start the bottom of the center. And part of the deal was to pay for his college education. I don't know, but I can't think of any other explanation. Sixth walk by Houston pitchers, the first, of course, from Mormon. Todd Jones lives in Pell City, Alabama now, born in Marietta, throwing in the bullpen for Houston. Chipper has singled, doubled, and walked. And he is profiled in the September 16th issue, I think it is, of Sports Illustrated. Oh, and won the count. The first of many that Chipper Jones, maybe not even the first, but one of many that he will see before his career is over. Did he go? One and one the count. Four, six, and two for the Braves. One, six, and one for Terry Collins Astros. Fred McGriff on deck. Right in there. One and two now the count. There is no shortage of good instruction in the Astros minor league organization as far as pitching is concerned. One of the best competitors I ever met, a real battler, coordinates their minor league pitching instruction, Vern Rule. Spent 14 years in the major leagues, learned how to pitch a number of different ways. Chipper knew it. He's called out on strikes, one away. And I know one of the things they teach there. One of the things that we talk about a lot, uh, if, you, if you look at the guys who are instructors in their organization, a strike there in a, a good spot. Jack Billingham, a pitching coach. What a good pitcher he was. He's a Kissimmee. Don Alexander down in the lower level. Craig McMurtry, one of their pitching coaches. Jim Hickey, a good one, but it goes right back to Vern Rule, who is a good pitcher. Pendleton is running. Sabio's throw way late. He stole that base on Mormon. What's with him? That's his second stolen base of the year. They both come in the last week. He's getting it tuned up a notch for the playoffs. He used to steal a lot of bases for St. Louis. Well, he was totally ignored. Mormon didn't even take a look over there. Pendleton had time to kick it in high gear or a reasonable facsimile of it. Take a look at the plate and stole that easily. Count one and zero on McGriff. It's even now a ball and a strike. Fred at 294. He has 173 hits on here, 26 homers, 100 RBI. But his home run production really down. I just quickly checked back. He had 21 of them on July the 20th. So now September 17th. He may need a hit right here to keep that hitting streak alive too, because it could be his last shot. You would hope so, that it's his last shot. I mean, two balls and a strike. Toward first, Pat Corrales gonna let that one go. Pat tried to field one, but I think it was in Denver. It didn't work out too well. And he's back in return. Two balls, two strikes. No when to hold them, no when to fold them. Yeah, you got it. And the two two pitches forthcoming. Ground ball sharply hit, but right at Vigio. Runner third, two down. And it's up to Ryan Klesko, who is the hero of the moment offensively for the Braves tonight. A three run double his last time.
Renner at third, two down. Mormon works off the stretch into the dirt. Eusebio, good play. Defensively, he reminds you a little bit of Charles Johnson. The fine Marlin catcher, the way he's low and ready to drop to his knees and block virtually every pitch. Long arms, like Johnson. Good arm. <laughs> right off the end of the bench. In the Houston dugout, and perhaps in the Atlanta dugout, they're yelling chalk up after that. <laughs> Swing. A ball and a strike to count. One and two to the count. Why do ball players spit so much, Don? I have no idea. Oh, yes, I do. Because they have a lot of saliva in their mouth. I guess that's probably as good, <laughs> good a reason as any. I never thought of it just that way. One and two to the count. <laughs> Chew a lot of gum. Two balls, two strengths. Probably a little nervous. I, I'm sure that that only normally, though, when I get nervous, my mouth gets very dry, not very. Last time you salivated. got nervous was 1964. Rapid City, South Dakota. That's, that would make you nervous. <laughs> Struck him out. Mormon gets out of early trouble. He lead off walk, but no problem for him. His second strikeout, no hits, no runs, no errors, one left. At the end of seven, 4 1 Atlanta. First finding out today that they'll be without Jim Leland next year. And the rest of the National League, Montreal has now made that lead five in Philadelphia. Florida is beating them up. Home runs by White, Abbott, and Colburn. Good pitching duel in St. Louis. Now 1 1 the score. LA at Colorado. It's raining there. And San Diego at San Francisco a little later on. We'll get you to the American League as soon as possible. Smoltz into the wind. And the first pitch of the eighth inning is rifled into right center. Cangelosi. A solid hit. That may get the Atlanta bullpen to turn things over. Runner at first, nobody out. I think the American League is possible right now. We were telling you before some of the other scores. Boston has taken a one-run lead over Detroit. It's still raining in New York. They may have gotten that one back underway. Milwaukee, Newfield has his second home run. Cleveland, sights are a grand slam to take the lead there. Minnesota and Kansas City in a one-run ball game. Oakland at California, Texas at Seattle. That is a complete look at the Delta scoreboard. Greg Biggio lines one into right. Die comes on, makes the catch, fires toward first. He is safe. Fred can't come up, but I think he had beat it back anyway. Good hustling play by Jermaine Die. Another ball sharply hit. Yeah, he comes in to make the catch, but watch him throw off balance. This shows you how strong his arm is. Uh, one hopper to Fred McGriff that made that a bang bang play. Here's Jeff Bagwell. No action in the Atlanta bullpen. I don't know if you've had it on your scoreboard, but the Cubs have tied the Cardinals at 1 1. Scott Service just drove in Ryan Sandberg. Cangelosi edges away. Foul to the screen. They're getting some pretty good swings now. Better than they have than they were earlier in the game. Now they've been taking swings all night long but now they're looking comfortable they don't look like they're being fooled by some pitches like they were in the fourth fifth and sixth inning oh and one the count oh and two well we're right again he's very comfortable but he's oh and two <laughs> That pitch right there will make a lot of people take uncomfortable swings. He could set the Braves modern strikeout record right here if he can get this tough hitter. He'd rather get a double play. He started to go held up one and two. What you said there was a very key line and a key thought in the in the maturation process of John Smoltz as a pitcher. Two years ago he would have liked to have gotten a strikeout. Maybe last year he would have liked to have gotten a strikeout. This year he would have rather have gotten a two outs with one pitch. That's the difference in him as a pitcher. Two and two. He wants to make it happen on this one. Two balls, two strikes. Javi with a word for his pitcher. Braves got a complete game last night. Can they come up with another one this evening? The word was plastics. 
Preston. <laughs> we were talking about old movies. That's one of the favorite lines in The Graduate. And you lost me right back there on plastics, buddy. Yeah, when they pulled the guy aside, he said, graduating from college, plastics. That's the word. I have a word for you. The 2 2 outside, full count. Let's see what the runner, Cangelosi, does down three late in the game. You'd think he'd stay home. So Matt Calante, the third base coach of the Astros. Actually coaching from shallow left field with Bagwell hitting. Not a bad idea. Payoff pitch. I uh, pop right side die a long run still coming he's going to run out of room it's in the seats fan from Concord North Carolina came away with a souvenir well it may be getting better swings at John Smoltz but that right there showed you how much velocity he still has left Bagwell a good fastball hitter in a situation where you've got to throw a fastball and he wasn't able to catch up to it and Mike Balecki is going to get up and go to work it would appear you're going to see a lot of him in the next two weeks. Double play ball, maybe. Softly hit Pendleton to second. Throw to first is going to be late. They were, did all they could do. So Bagwell hits into a fielder's choice. He's aboard with two out. And he got the bouncer that he wanted. Maybe just Bagwell didn't hit it hard enough. He's another one of those guys. He is a complete package. He hits for average. He hits for home runs. And you never find a single play in a ballgame where you don't see Jeff Bagwell hustling. Mark Wollers is in the Atlanta bullpen as well. Sean Barry is the batter. He singled in a run in the first. Maybe the biggest play of the game for Braves fans. Certainly on defense was in the third inning of the game with the bases loaded and one out. They with runners at second third and one out Bobby Cox intentionally walked Jeff Bagwell and it worked out perfectly as Barry rolled into a double play. Cardinals bat in the bottom of the sixth now tied with the Cubs one one. High drive deep left field that might be trouble Klesko looks up that baby is gone and it's a one run ball game. That was number 17 and he now has 94 RBIs and he's driven on all three of the Astro runs tonight and he's made it a one run ball game. He came into this ball game three for 21 against John Smoltz. He's picked up two hits tonight. He's picked up three RBIs. Smoltz went to the breaking ball with him. He wants it down and away. It's down and right down the middle and you can see by that swing Barry is still favoring that right shoulder. He had to turn it loose, but he strong enough that even with one hand could hit it out of here. Bobby's going to stay with John here against Derek Bell. Steve Reich on the outside corner, and that proves, I think, the swing by Barry. You don't have to swing from your heels; just get a good swing on the That's ball right. and let those jackrabbits they put in there go to work. Two out here. The 0-1 pitch. I uh, pop short right field. Out goes Belliard. He's got it, and the inning is over. But Houston moves back into the game. They score two runs on two hits. The home run by Barry, the big blow. There were no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom half of the eighth. Braves could use some insurance. They lead now four to three. 17 saves, but the league hitting 267 against him. He has been a bit disappointing for them. Javi Lopez leads it off. Look out. Fastball high and inside. He's got a great arm. Well, I think they thought they were going to have Hudak closing it out, and they were going to have Jones getting you to Hudak. That's one of the reasons they could let Dave Beers go. But both have battled some physical problems this year. One and one the count. Lopez die and Belliard do here. If anybody gets on, the pitcher would hit. Or a pinch hitter, depending on how Bobby chooses to play it. His bullpen is empty at the moment. In case you missed it earlier, first the 2 1 pitch. Up the middle, can it sneak through? No, Biggio is there. Whirls, throws close. He beat it up. Javi legs out an infield hit to start the eighth inning. 
a little insurance would be just fine here. Low fastball chopped up the middle. Biggio the only one who can get to it. If Miller could have gotten to it with his momentum going toward first, could have gotten more on the throw, but an off-balance throw a little bit late. Look at him hustle. You can smell a base hit. That that fine gives you a gear you didn't know you had. Yeah, he got that hit his first two or three steps out of the batter's box by not giving up on it. Here's Jermaine Dye, who has line to left, popped a second and single. Into the dirt, one ball, no strikes. It's been decided by the Braves medical crew that David Justice is shut down for the year. He will not participate in any way as a pinch hitter or anything in the last couple of weeks of the season or any postseason play. He's doing just great. Everything's coming along. But the muscles talking to Bobby before the game the muscles are still very weak on the inside of the shoulder and they're afraid that if his hand ever came off the bat or he had to dive or slide or got hit that it could cause very very serious damage and it's just simply not worth the risk. That's the bad news. The good news is his rehabilitation is coming along great. Hanging curveball hit to deep center. Cangelosi going back to the wall. He's got room. Bangs against the wall. Look at Javi. He tags and goes to second base. Good hustling play. Jermaine died just missed getting it out of here and I think that's what Javi thought. He thought it's either going to be a home run or it's going to be caught and if it's caught I want to get in scoring position. So he did a good job. Yeah if you think it's going to be a double you want to be where you can score on it but that one hanging up so high. Got a bead on it right about here. Javi Lopez is back to the bag the tag. Not even any effort he's able to cruise in the second. And despite the good wheels he showed there, Tony Graffanino is going to run for him. Bobby's probably thinking, Bobby, you did real good to get the first. You did real good to get the second. Let's not tempt fate. And Dwight Smith is going to come out here and pinch hit for Rafael Bellier. Now Mark Wallers is up again in the Atlanta bullpen. Bobby Cox gambling on getting an extra run or two. A right-hander and a left-hander in the bullpen now for Houston. Tell you why you got to do this against the Astros. The Astros are 78 and 73. Of their 78 wins, 35 of them have been comeback wins, and in 14 of their last 27, they have been comeback wins. So anytime you can get a chance to get more runs on the board, you got to do it. Terry Collins is out, and he's going to. Looks like double switch here. Brian Hunter is going to come into the game. Everybody's moving around. The right fielder, Derek Bell, may be out of the game. Derek May is headed for right. Hunter is going to go to center. Cangelosi is going to go to left. And Billy Wagner is going to come on to pitch, and we'll be back after Check this. Me. And we gave you the changes. May moves to right. Wagner comes on to pitch. Hunter is in center, and Cangelosi moves over to left. Billy Wagner's done a good job. He's been a starting pitcher. They're extremely high on this guy, long term, as a starter every fourth or fifth day. But he's done a good job out of the bullpen. He's had some physical problems this year, too. 48 base runners in 46 innings, but look at that strikeout total. If you can get a lot of double plays, or if you can strike out more than one in an inning, you can afford that base on balls total, but still, only one base runner per inning is pretty impressive. Mike Mordecai pinch hits for Dwight Smith. If you're a new baseball fan, you might be thinking, well, they'll use Dwight Smith later. No, they can't. He was announced, and once you're announced, you can pinch hit for him, but he cannot play anymore tonight, even though he didn't swing the bat. So Mordecai stands in, and Andrew Jones has grabbed a bat. He would pinch hit next. So it looks like Mark Wolders, who's up in our bullpen, will finish things up for Atlanta. Another run would come in very handy here. Either Mordecai or Graffinino will play second base in the ninth. Morty hacks away, doesn't get it, 0-1. Not a whole lot of wasted effort by Wagner. Short arms the ball a little bit. Probably doesn't throw it 99 miles an hour. But he gets movement right at the end, a little bit of a deceptive motion. He's out of Tannersville, Virginia. High and away. A ball and a strike. A 
looking ahead to the Houston ninth inning. Brian Hunter will probably lead it up. When you see B.O. and Miller, we'll see. High, lazy fly into left. That'll be easy. Cangelosi over there for the second out of the inning. Now let's see if Andrew Jones marches toward the plate. He will, and he will hit here against Wagner. So John Smoltz is done. He cannot lose it. He can only win it. He has tied Phil Necro. And he'll have to wait for his start against Montreal next. What's today? Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Next, this coming Saturday night at 7:10 to set the modern day Atlanta strikeout record. Andrew's been struggling. He's down to 224. Been chasing bad pitches early in the count to get behind in the count. Joe understands what he's going through, having been in similar spots. He's played every day all his life, which is not very long. He's only 19 years old. It's very tough when that's the way you've played to suddenly play every now and then. That's not an alibi, it's just a fact. And he rifles that ball into deep right center field. Hunter on the run, can't get it. A run is in. Andrew falls down, gets to his feet, and trots into second. Might have cost himself a base. See if he's all right. He drove in a big run. And the Braves lead by two. That'll do him a world of good. Not the fall, but the base hit. And he got it off a tough left-hander. He can hit the ball hard the other way. That just above the knees on the outside corner. Brian Hunter has good speed, but he can't catch up to this one. Comes up a few feet shy. He's watching the bag and then tries to change his feet to hit the bag. He's thinking maybe that ball may be up against the wall. And as he shifted his feet, got a little bit out of sync. Brian Klesko will tell him after the game, hey, Andrew, that base has been there for over 100 years. you got to watch out for that. Thing. Marquise Grissom, the batter. And don't worry, Andrew, that's the first time that's ever happened here. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to put Grissom on and pitch to Pendleton. The run is charged to Todd Jones, so a third of an inning, a hit and a run. And a big run it is. And Terry Pendleton will go to the plate against Wagner. Grissom will finish the night one out of four with an RBI and a run scored is 191st hit of the year. It's a final now. Montreal wins again. They beat the Mets seven to one. Out hitting them ten to six. Pendleton the banner. Terry tonight has walked struck out walked again and walked again. He has stolen a base. Now Wallers has sat down. I can't tell who that is. It's like Joe Borowski. That's Kevin Loman. The stretch and the pitch. A little high, one ball, no strikes. I'm quite sure the Wallers is just ready and will enter this game. Yeah, all Loman is doing is loosening up Tony Graffinino. That means he's the one that will enter the game to play second base. Whew. Two and zero the count. Glad we figured that one out. Mark just waiting to see what kind of margin of error he's going to have here. Five three, our score. Each team has eight hits. Look out. 3 and 0 oh, he might just walk again. If he does it'll load him up for chipper. One of the things you have to learn to become a successful closer is how far you have to go to get ready and then just to kind of sit there and do nothing. A lot of guys would just keep throwing but there is a point when you know you're ready but now you just wait till it's your turn. He walked it. Base is loaded. Chipper has a chance to finish this baby off. Wagner issues his second pass the eighth by Houston pitchers Brent Storm on his way to the mound 
You don't walk eight men in a pennant race very often and live to tell about it. What did I say? Storm? Strom is the man's name. I apologize. Chipper Jones tonight has single, doubled, walked, and scored, and struck out. A base hit here would fit the bill very nicely. Still got themselves a good pitching duel going in St. Louis, bottom of the seventh. You know, the Cubs would love to knock off the Cardinals. Normally, we give you the standings per day. We have gotten it down to an exact science here. Strike to Chipper, 0 and 1. Yeah, the wild card standings as of, as of 10 o'clock tonight. Baltimore by three over Chicago, three and a half over Seattle, six over Boston, San Diego by a game and a half over Montreal, six over Colorado, seven over Houston. Off his foot, and he's quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. Bottom line for Houston is they got to beat St. Louis or they go home. I mean, that's not a mathematical fact, but it just about is pretty, pretty new. Pretty new. Oh, and two, the count. Bases full of Braves. Our run is in, two are out. And the inning is over, and Wagner gets a tough hitter to get out of it, but he gave up the double to Andrew Jones that provided the insurance run. Two hits in the inning. One important run, no airs, three left. Last chance for Houston, Mark Wohler meanders in from the bullpen. The Braves lead 5-3. Movies for guys who like movies. Third. Foul tip gets just a little of it, goes right over Eddie Perez's shoulder. That's why you wear the mask. Eusebio, two out of four against Wolers in his career. He taps it foul, a ball, and two strikes. Astros got a run in the first. Braves got four in the fifth. Astros got two in the eighth. Braves got one in the eighth. And that's where we stand right now. It's 5 3. The one two pitch. Just missed outside. Two and two the count. Randy Marsh getting plenty of help here from the crowd, which was announced at 32,115. Two balls, two strikes. Orlando Miller waits to hit next. Brian Hunter would follow him. The 2-2. Off the plate, that's trouble. Pendleton has to wait. Fields throws. He beat it. Terry had no choice. Once it hit that plate, you knew he was in a world of hurt. So the tying run comes to the plate, and it's a guy who's hit some dramatic home runs for these guys. Right off the front of the plate, Pendleton does everything that he can. Look, he's side saddle. He's already cocked the throw. He threw that like a second baseman turning a double play. Good hustle by Eusebio. Going to get a pinch runner at first base. I'm James Mouton comes in to run. And Miller will come to the plate. Miller one out of four in his career against the Atlanta right-hander. Interesting to see what Mark Wohler starts him off with because Miller is a good fastball hitter. Remember, he roped one off of John Smoltz, one of Smoltz's best fastballs of the night. He did a double back in the seventh inning, starting with something off speed. Runner at first, one out. Upstairs, one ball, no strengths. That three run homer by Ken Caminiti gives him 121 RBIs for the year. A new Padres record, the old record, 119, it was held by Dave Winfield. Sun Chips partner on the Fox pregame show. The 1-0 pitch. Runner going. Swung. Hit foul. 
The Braves always concede that run, and you don't like that, do you? No, I don't. I don't either. Because you eliminate, you have a guy here who is not going to hit the right field, even with a left-handed pull hitter up. I don't like it. Because you concede that base, you take the double play out of play, you eliminate another combination of ways to get an out. He's not going to hit the ball over there. And, and you're talking about a matter of four or five feet that McGriff is going to expand his defense. I just think that's being a little too generous. Almost the ball. Has the Yankee game been either resumed or called yet? Or are they still hanging around? Anybody know? Still wait. Boss may not turn out the lights there until about 3 a.m. A ball and a strike, the count. Runner at first, one out. Braves up by two. There he goes again. Strike. One and two, but the runner is at second. Catcher's indifference is the call, which means no stolen base for Mouton. But he gets to second anyway. So now the ground ball double play is no longer a factor here. Wohler is a very deliberate worker, but the way he's going, you don't want him to change a thing. The one two. Off his foot, still one and two. Tomorrow afternoon at 110, Mike Hampton, a left hander on the mound for. Houston and Greg Maddox will go for the Braves. Hampton's pitched some good ball games against the Braves. And he's a good-looking young pitcher, isn't he? He studies things intently here as he gets ready for his start tomorrow. Worst night of the week if you're a starting pitcher. You have to sit there and keep the chart all night. Line drive, right field base hit. Runner around third. They'll hold him there, but now... The potential go ahead run comes to the plate in the person of Brian Hunter and he did hit the ball to right field hit it sharply so we're not out of this thing yet boy the way it started looked like a good pitch down and away maybe not even a strike but he had made up his mind to hit it that way all the way might have been usually if a guy hits a ball that way off a fastball pitcher like Wolers he's looking for a breaking ball just a little bit of a tardy swing so Hunter stands in. He's been hampered by injury much of the year, but he's hitting 285. Five homers, 34 RBI. Tough man to double. He runs extremely well. 0 for 2 against Mark Wolders. More good news for Houston if they can win here. The pitch, wild pitch to the backstop. Runner goes to second, and again, the double play is taken out of play, and now. A base hit could mean two runs and a speedy runner at second base. Ryan Sandberg just had a two run homer his 25th of the year and the Cubs in the eighth inning lead St. Louis three to one. Overthrew it skipped all the way back. Eddie Perez quickly to it. That ball gets right back at you real quick uh, if it hits that pad right behind there. So some pretty alert base running at second by Mut I mean at third by Mouton. One and all the count. Hey, hey. One and one. Boy, and a guy that scares you to death is next, John, John Cangelosi. But first, you got to worry about Hunter. High pop. Over comes McGriff. No play. Lands in the front row behind the dugout. He had no chance. It's one and two. It would be harder right now if you had a guy up there who was a contact hitter. If you had a guy like a, a Biggio or even a Cangelosi. And what you want to do if you're pitching is take advantage of the fact that Hunter probably will swing like he'd rather hit a three-run homer than a two-run single. Can't win it till you tie. 
That's what scares you about Cangelosi next. You know he'll just try to slap one strike. But Hunter's dangerous. Line drive. Base hit. One run will score. The other runner is going to have to stop at third. And Mark Wohlers is having one of his very, very rare bad outings. Miller thought the ball was going to be caught. If he takes off with a crack of the bat, he scores easily. But he waited to see, which is the right thing to do if you're not sure. Yeah, in his defense, hanging breaking ball, in his defense, he doesn't know that's going to go over Lemke's glove to right there, and you don't want to end the ball game getting doubled off at second base. Now with a tying run at third, the Braves are going to bring the infield in. You, all, you have a guy, Cangelosi, who is a topspin lob hitter. He is not a guy who's going to hit a lot of fly balls. If you bring the infield in, that increases the area out there where he hits the ball. Little bloopers. So all of the th sudden things have really turned around for Houston. It looked like they were going to be knocked back. But just as they've started their rally, the Cubs have rallied and taken the lead in St. Louis. So they can move to within a game and a half if they can keep this rolling. You see Balecki and Wade in the Atlanta bullpen. Half their wins are comeback wins this year, so nothing new to them. Leo Mazzoni on his way to the mound. But this game is what makes it great. He comes in and makes Derek May, a good left-hand hitter, look absolutely helpless against him. And since then, nothing but hits. An infield hit and two solid shots. Go figure. But if you watch the Braves and the Astros, the last four ball games, one-run games, Really, no surprise. The last four were decided, and the Astros rallied to win three of those. Braves normally, well, I guess it's every other year. The odd years, good to the Braves. The even years, not so kind. They play the infield back at short and second. Pendleton even with a bag at third. McGriff holds the runner on. It's 0 1. Vigio is next. A base hit ties it. An extra base hit might give him the lead. Hunter can run like the wind. And Cangelosi is a good bunter. Anything bunted to the right side will get that run home from third. So that's not something with a guy like him you can completely throw out of his arsenal. Hunter with 32 stolen bases. There he goes. Inside, he'll make it without a play. Stole that on Waller. And that's the go-ahead run now in scoring position. We just keep giving them bases. That one, though, they, the Braves didn't do that. Mark Wohlers did. He was so intent on the hitter, he just ignored it. Now the infield comes in, and that increases the edge for the hitter. A little more area out there where Cangelosi normally hits it. About 230 feet away. 5, 8, and 2 for Atlanta. 4, 11, and 1 for Houston. How close to the plate he is. Right on it. It's almost like he's defying you to throw it inside. Probably can't handle it, but I'll take it on the wrist again. He's a tough little guy. I'd like to have him on my club. So would the Braves, in fact. I can't tell you how or why, but I know they've in the past tried to get Cangelosi, been unable to do so. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. Stop Eddie Perez. Perez doesn't make that play. It's a tie ball game. And the go-ahead runs a third with less than two out. Watch this. Diving split finger fastball. Unable to slide over there. Went down so quick, but he did a good job of blocking it, and he ended up in his mitt. Three and one. Be careful here. Too, but it didn't have much on it, did it? Now, as he went to the off-speed pitch, what Cangelosi was looking for was a strike, but he was looking for a strike off the fastball. The off-speed pitch threw him off. If you can do that three and one, you've set up a whole bunch of options to strike him out. And that's what Mark is looking for here is a strikeout. But can he get it? He's got a tough man to fan. Payoff pitch. 
high. He walked him nowhere near. Cangelosi, boy, he's tough. So there's the first walk on the night for Wohlers. And now a tough hitter, Craig Biggio, comes to the plate. He is a clutch hitter. Three out of 11 in his career against the Atlanta right-hander. But he is the kind of guy normally that finds a way to put the ball in play. His natural swing and inside out swing. If I were Rapinino at second, I'd be ready. Infield back, hopeful of getting a double play. That's doable with Biggio, but he runs very, very well, as his 24 stolen bases would attest. No place to put him. Bagwell next. Upstairs, one ball, no strikes. 5 4 is our score. Houston has the tying run at third, the go ahead run at second, insurance run at first. Realizing hitting was never by strength, about a 145 career hitter, but I think the way Wolers is throwing, Biggio is a good enough hitter. I would make him throw me a strike before I cut on anything. He chased the high fastball. You might be right. That looked like it was upstairs, one and one. It's obvious Mark Wohlers is not in complete command. You do him a favor when you chase pitches out of the strike zone. No, that's kind of hard. It's easy to say sitting up here when it's going 99 miles an hour, but you make up your mind in that situation. I'm taking one anyway. Montreal has won their game tonight. Hot shot to third. They're going for two. Out there. Braves win. Wohlers got the double play. And give Graffanino some credit at second base, boy. He stood in and made a lemke like pivot, and the Braves get out of it and win the game. Wow. Good win for the Braves. They had won two in a row and looked like this one was going to get away. Watch the turn at second because Cangelosi is going up one side and down the other of Graffanino, but he turned it so easily 